This is BBC One in the North West. Now, Inside Out. Hello and welcome to Inside Out North West with me, Diane Oxbury. Tonight, when the beautiful game turns ugly, we investigate why the owners of Blackpool Football Club are at war and fans are boycotting the games. We've gone from the Premier League and we're going down to the bottom division and it's got to stop. 50 years on, we reveal why an entire Welsh village was knocked down and flooded to build a reservoir for Liverpool. What was in the, in the village itself? The chapel, post office, shop, school. The whole Welsh-speaking community was around here. And we discover how former judo champion Owen Lowry has rebuilt his life after a major sporting injury. Wherever I move my head, the mouse cursor moves. If I need to perform a click or a double click, I blow down the straw on my headset. Five years ago, Blackpool Football Club were playing in a packed stadium against the elite of the English Premier League. Fast forward to today and the club are languishing near the bottom of England's third tier of football with its owners at war and its fans boycotting games. How has so much gone wrong for Blackpool in so little time? Richard Askham has been investigating. Conflict and controversy from top to bottom. Blackpool is a club in crisis. Blackpool is of course famous for many things, for its promenade, its tower and its ballroom, but also for the long and proud history of its football club. The Matthews final of 53 is possibly the most famous in FA Cup history and their promotion into the Premier League in 2010, one of the most remarkable. Blackpool Football Club are in the Premier League next season. Today, though, the club is in a mess. Despite its modern ground, performances on the field have gone from bad to worse. The two owners are at war and many fans have had enough. We want to get the chairman out. We want the club run properly. The whole team tonight, it's just on one-year loans, one-year one year loan deals. We don't even have proper players. He needs to go. No one wants him here. Everybody wants him gone. Money has long been tight at Bloomfield Road. Owen Oyston, a local businessman, bought a club that was on its knees in 1988. It was the Oyston family's money that kept the club solvent. And less than a decade later, his son Carl became chairman. Then in 2006, a Latvian businessman, Valeri Belakon, joined the club's board and everything changed. Bellacon went on to invest about £7 million into the Seasiders in return for a 20% share, plus a slice of matchday revenue. His cash was pivotal in helping Blackpool gain promotion to the Premier League in 2010, worth a jaw-dropping £90 million. We've been told that over half of that has been spent on players' salaries, more on tax bills. But controversially, much of the money went to companies owned by the Oyston family. In 2012, it was revealed that Blackpool FC had paid a company owned by Owen Oyston £11 million. Carl Oyston claimed it was a tax-efficient way of paying off some of the club's debts. The football club then loaned £27 million to a separate company, also owned by the Oystons. The families say that money has either been invested in the club or remains available to spend, a claim disputed by many fans who've seen their teams slide down the leagues. After just one season in the Premier League, Blackpool just missed out on a return two years later. But manager Ian Holloway's departure that same year proved a turning point. In the three years that followed, seven managers have come and gone. But last season, transfer brinkmanship turned to farce, with only a handful of players on the books a fortnight before the opening game. We 
protests outside Bloomfield Road have been going on for the last couple of seasons. And of course, there are different shades of opinion amongst Blackpool supporters, but I think this is another illustration of just how much the relationship between a large section of the supporters and the owners, the Oyston family, have completely broken down. With Carl Oyston often portrayed, sometimes by himself, as the pantomime villain, football's most public fallout became intensely personal. Some fans, desperate for the Oystons to sell up, crossed the line, with deeply unpleasant personal abuse aimed at members of their family. Carl Oyston sued and won compensation for comments on internet fans' forums. On the flip side, he was disciplined by the FA and in June was given a six-week ban and fined £40,000 for sending abusive text messages to a supporter. Nobody from the Oyston family was willing to appear in this film. They cannot stay here anymore. They must realise that it has gone too far. Owen Oyston has the opportunity now to make thousands of people extremely happy by giving the club over to the fans. Yet despite the widespread claims of financial mismanagement, the Oystons argue they've actually run the club very sensibly. Blackpool has £15 million in the bank and the family say that its relationship with other Oyston companies gives it more financial security than almost any other club outside the Premier League. If things were rosier on the pitch, their thinking goes, the most vociferous protests would simply melt away. But the Oystons have another problem, their relationship with Valeri Bellacon. All smiles at Wembley in 2010, it wasn't long before Mr Bellacon became unhappy at how the club was being operated. Last month he decided to sue the Oystons, claiming they haven't run Blackpool Football Club in the interests of all shareholders, only themselves. I travelled halfway across Europe to his home city in Latvia to get his side of the story. Valeri Belakon is certainly well known in his home city of Riga. He owns several companies including an international bank as well as other businesses in the media, financial and food industries. His wealth is estimated somewhere in the region of £200 million. But even so, why would he use part of that fortune to buy into a club like Blackpool? And what happens now? Well, in an extremely rare television interview, he agreed to talk to me about his plans at his office in the middle of the city. You obviously know about the inner workings of the club more than most people, and you know about your intentions and the Oyston family's intentions. Owen has, in essence, done a lot for the club in over 25 years, and I think what he really wanted was for his son Carl to continue to manage the club and they would form yeah. some kind of dynasty of family members running the club. But it seems that he's taken over the love for money, and not for the club. And do you hope that I you... Hope, that you do you hope, I Bill hope. Airy, that you will be the owner in, let's say, five years' time? I should be honest. I answer you honest. If you ask me, hope. If I hope, I should, I must something do in this case. And I thinking and now I ask me honest do I all do I do everything to achieve this or not it's question to me but I would lo love to you mentioned if you were to put in further investments or possibly take over the club you would like to um, do that with a local partner have you spoken to any potential local partners to do that I'm not ready to tell the names, but I have indeed met local partners who, in my opinion, love football. We can work together. So these are local business people? Yes. With serious money? With enough money, because I don't know what this means serious. <laughs> On the other side of the argument, two years ago, Valeri Belacon asked the Oystons to pay him £24 million for his 20% share. Judging someone's absolute intentions is extremely difficult, but I think it is fair to say that with documents I've seen, this does appear to represent a significant change of heart. We also understand that a German consortium 
recently approached Blackpool with a view to a takeover and according to sources within the club that fell down because of a lack of communication between Valeri Bellicon and the Oyston family. Meanwhile in July the Blackpool Supporters Trust launched its own £16 million takeover bid but with the club's assets valued by the owners at least double that it went no further. The situation is extremely distressing now for a great many people. For, for people who have supported this club for generations, um, to, to feel that we no longer even have a, a team to support properly anymore is, is just awful. Positions on all sides have become increasingly entrenched and with what could be a bitter legal battle between the shareholders going through the courts, it's clear that there's likely to be a lot more pain before this club gets back to some sort of stability. As long as they go, who cares? Just let it get sold down, who will buy it? You should let BST buy it. We've gone from the Premier League and we're going down to the bottom division and it's got to stop. <laughs>